I want that pop. And the parents give in. Instead of doing that, I used to say, buy the kid a box of crayons. That'll teach him fine motor school skills. It'll satisfy his desire. Little simple little things like that were good parenting skills that most people don't know or you have to figure out on your own. And that it's again back to this a very original point that you made about the parenting. We need classes like that to teach people, to help people, to coach parents on how to be good parents. And finally, I can't resist saying, at your age, you probably didn't go to the real Flint Northern. You went to that fake Northern. No. <laughs> <laughs> shoe shop and uh, where I make and repair shoes and for me the, the, the driving force for that was I want to make shoes and I as you might expect like who, who in the United States makes shoes right <laughs> so <laughs> how, how in the heck am I going to find out how to do this so you know I, I, I knocked down a lot of doors and just sent a lot of emails and tried to put things together and you know I didn't have a family or even you know, like a strong father figure that was really pushing me in this direction, but I just sort of felt like this is something I want to do, and I pushed those doors down. And it would be easy for me to say, um, "Well, that's something that I did, and you know, I took responsibility for myself." But if I look back, and, and I do believe in that, I do believe in personal responsibility. But if I look back before that, I have to understand that um, the reason that I was at that place to do that was because I had been given a chance when I was. Um, when I had experience with the Flint Crepe Company, uh, working with Rod Clayton, that gave me the confidence to believe that I could actually do something like that. And so, on the flip side, if I were to look at certain young black men, I would see that there's a good chance that they, they don't even realize that if they jump out and take that chance, that there's actually a good chance that something actually good is going to come out of it. So the fact that somebody poured into me initially was was part of the reason why I decided to take responsibility. Can I piggyback off that too? So I'm also uh, I also work for Rob Clady, like and we kind of have uh, a parallel. And, and look at us, we're we're from two different backgrounds, um, but we were both. Both of us were offered an opportunity through our experience with Rob Clady, him being a businessman, um, able to give mentor, like uh, mentorship in business um, and everything like that. And these types of opportunities, as far as like as what you were saying, like there are things set in place that kind of keep for everyone doesn't get these opportunities. And for me, this is my first time in my life ever having an opportunity to, to go into business, um, to become, you know what I'm saying, a business owner, or to even pursue that because of this opportunity. But everyone's not even offered offer these types of opportunities in context. And so that's something we gotta consider as well. Like if you go right now to 
and I, I just keep saying north side flint it's kind of cliche but that's pretty much like the like the like the epicenter of kind of like the poverty and the, you know and where where there's a lot of young african americans but a lot of those guys are actually deprived of opportunity unless we create something that will give them opportunity there's land there none of us are buying land where vacant houses are like why aren't we buying land and creating gardens well that's why Bureaucratic institutions. So, so why aren't we? Why aren't we buying? Foundation. Why aren't we buying anything? Like, why aren't we investing in anything? Like, one of the things I see is that we can invest in something, create a business sector, which will create economics, which economics will create community, which community will create so forth, and you can do that. But who's thinking of that? These people aren't thinking that way, nor are they even saying like, "Hey, I have the opportunity to do that." Thus, education, that's something I had to be educated in. It's like, no, you can actually go and do this. I thought I had to go to college for six years to start a business. And I was like, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I take my money responsibly, right, based on what I've been given, the opportunity, and I invest it, and I create something for somebody else. And, 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 and I say that's a parallel thing, and you're just kind of seeing fruit from that. And that's something I want to do also for the community and the neighborhood and neighborhoods in Flint. But I you. see a lot yeah. of people who are trying to invest uh, in land. I, I know a lot of folks who would like to purchase the lot that's next to their home or one that's down the block, and they are prohibited from doing so. Wait, and that's something that has to change. And again, we get back to the structural inequities and the inequalities. Mm -hmm. And this gets down to the structural inequities and inequalities in the city of Flint itself that involves you know, a lot of different folks with different actors with moneyed interests. Um, and just as an aside, does, has Rob Clady allowed women to work at the Flint Creek Company Absolutely. yet? Absolutely. How many? Absolutely, we have three. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's been. Yep. Yes, this year. Because at yep. first, this year. Absolutely. Oh okay. no, she's been yep. there. Absolutely. Uh, Chris and what's the yep. wife? Chris and Kayla, probably like two years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, almost three and a half years. Yeah. That's yep. good to know. Yep, so yeah, yeah. yep. And that's an evolution process. So, <laughs> all right, we got a few minutes left, okay? <clears throat> Let's talk solutions. I wanna, I wanna hear what you guys, what ideas you guys have. Like, how are we gonna engage this thing? Because I think, I feel like we, we presented a lot of problems, right? But it's like, how are we gonna engage these solutions? Open. Oh, yeah. I, I just wanted to give one more thing. Right. That, that it's kind of the opposite side. So I've seen the personal responsibility side, mm -hmm. and. Um, you, I, I put this on the, the Facebook post, which is, I think, why you asked me to be up here. But um, So I, I believe that there are a lot of good police officers. And if I look at things from the perspective of a police officer that's look, called to go in a particular situation, I know a lot of us might think this guy's on a power trip and he's looking to go throw his weight around. I'm assuming that there's a lot of good police officers that are thinking, I just don't want to get myself hurt in this situation. So, and I believe that there's a lot of police officers like that. On the flip side, I, as a, just, uh, just a regular white dude from the suburbs, I've been in situations where, in several situations where, because I didn't feel like I had the certain you know, parents that had good connections and so forth, like I got chucked under the bus by police officers to the point where, uh, there was a certain distrust in myself in police officers to the point that um, the way that I view police, I, I respect police officers, but there is a certain part of me that having those experiences does dis distrust police officers. And when I, um, when I see si situations like the Ferguson thing, and there, there's certainly, whether this is a reality, and it seems to be a reality, but certainly the perception that within the police when something happens, within the, within the police departments, it's sort of this good old boys network where we all protect ourselves and it's closed in, and somehow it seems like the way that these decisions are come to, it some, it, it, at least it feels like it's not really, it's, it's cooked right from the start because it's not really something that's an unbiased group that's making these decisions. So, so what I would ask is, to, to um, uh, Mr. Tolbert is do you see 
within your experience, is, is there, are there things that could be done within police departments to, to open that up so that there isn't the perception that, okay, this is just police protecting their own? Does that, because I think that's the perception, certainly, uh, in the black community, it seems to me that they're just rallying around each other and it doesn't matter whether they did it or they didn't, they're gonna protect their own. Yeah, yes, I, I do believe that there are, are ways uh, that we can be more transparent, open up uh, uh, investigations and, and things that happen. Uh, however, it goes both ways, uh, obviously. And I think that, uh, I, so your answer is yes. So I'm gonna let her, her hands up and somebody's holding her hand up. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Yep, so we're about to wrap up too, you guys. He gave me a signal. So last last question. Last. She was there. She had her hand up before okay. I hear it. Mine wasn't a question. Mine tied into the solution and it was Kevin, right? Yeah. Mine tied into him and I, I completely agree with him, but we got off on the Darwin and all the other stuff. Um, I personally did do programs with kids and I did like summer program at Linden Charter and I did the tutoring with the high schoolers at Southwestern and I think the kids need more of that and they need to see that they can do better and they can be something more because I mean, I myself would have never heard that outside of talking to those kids at the study table, and even some of the um, black people that were tutoring too were even like, wow, because we asked them, we said, why are you not trying to improve yourself? Why are you not trying you know, to do better for yourself? And a couple of the guys said, well, when you have a mom who can't do anything, and you have brothers and sisters that are relying on you, it's easier to just go out there and sling drugs yep. than to try and play sports or better my grades or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we need to do something to fix that. There's an alternative, yeah. Yep. I was just going to say, you mentioned something about solutions, and I feel like there are, there are a lot of solutions Absolutely. that, you know, or programs or institutions that exist here in Flint. Mm -hmm. We're not, the culture of Flint has been stripped down in such a way that we can't even recognize our own city from the from what it used to be to where it could be and where it needs to go. And I think that that's where a lot of the fear and concern is. I mean, we talk about the arts, so there's a lot of arts programs, a lot of after school programs, a lot of people starting these initiatives, churches, and so forth. But the attendance, people who actually get up off their butts, I mean, and you can work tirelessly to promote spend thousands of dollars to, to have flyers and social media and the news and the newspaper and 50 people show up. Yep. So then, you know, and, and, and it's not that these things aren't effective. It's just that the, 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 the culture of the city, we're not supporting, we're not supporting each other's ideas. There you right? go, right there. And I think she said it best, right there. Right there. You know, and let me say this before I, I get you. Like, the, the thing that was very disheartening, even after I started Good Boy, was that the amount of African-American dollars that went into that was close to none. Close to none. Right. I'm like, why? Well, you would rather buy Gucci, <coughs> Louis Vuitton support these things that's enslaving you rather than building your own community up and something that stands for that, that's going to help the community. Because that's what I'm about. I'm not trying to be the next Ralph Lauren or <laughs> any of that. Yeah. Right, everybody <laughs> goes to the Nutcracker, the Nutcracker is full. There you go. You know, when, you, when there's holiday pops, it's like it's crowded. You know there what I'm saying? Go. When it's time to do the crim, millions of people show up around the world. Come on. So when we have, like, you know, uh, grassroots uh, Come on. things Support. going on here at the school program, Support. people who are in the trenches doing this stuff every Support. single day, nobody's showing there up. There you go. Support.
branch of the ACLU. And one of the things that we did not touch on in this discussion was what happened when people peaceably assembled in Ferguson and all of the arrests that occurred. And so what we're doing um, is a series of Know Your Rights forums. And if I can get your information, and you can be invited to the next forum, which will probably be early January or February, of what happens and what your rights are when you are peacefully protesting, what you can and can't do. And I would say, like, some of the stuff where people are saying like, they're, they're not supported, which goes on with another year or lane, I am a grassroots organizer, and I'm interested in doing um, trainings in the city of Flint because I haven't done any training in Flint in a while on how to effectively organize. So how to get people in your meeting, how to hold one-on-one -on -one conversations, how to build relationships, because it's all about building relationships. So how can we actualize our own power and leverage it to create community change? Yep, that's good. I think that's really good. Let's get the uh, Fatima. I just, you said solutions, and I just want to back off this. It's a, right now. I'm from the north side of Flint, but I left, went to college, went to the floor, came back, didn't want to come back. And I realized that the only way to, to make a change is to come back. Right now, there's an issue with the city of Flint between the north side and the rest of Flint. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels like the down, every, all the money is in downtown. You said, you made a good point. When I'm downtown, I'm a water police officer. Oh, yeah, they I'm a water because I go to the floor. Every police officer, <laughs> every police officer up in church hills, you can make you turn in downtown, you know every single cop. But when I'm on the north side, they don't even know me. But my mind, they know my name when I'm down here. And the people have this thing where they feel like the policing on the north side is totally different than policing everywhere else. And they call it something like the Delta Zone or the D Zone. They even got a whole nickname that they said that y'all came up with. Just like, you know, this is, my eyes, my niece and nephews are young. So my solution, or one of my solutions, I agree, I agree when you said we, you, you guys need to get back in the neighborhood, is you do need to get back in the neighborhood. The north side, and I mean right now, people, and you said something about, about the master plan, people feel like the master plan is to tear the north side down. You pay me back off of, can, can I get land? Well, they just had an auction in October, and I bought land, but I can't compete with the contractors who got $10,000 on the land bank who not, I can't, can't do nothing. But, and then you got the, you the real, you got the drug dealers who buying up the whole, they got, whole, they got the whole home street. At Strap House. I can't, I don't have enough money to buy your, the houses that they, I mean, if I could buy three and four, same thing, what I did, I went on, I went on Facebook and told people, if we all put in this much money, let's, we can buy this house, this house, and this house, and this land, and this land, and this land. Oh, it happened. Mm -hmm. And we bought a lot of land, but we, personally, I'm not for the land bank. Um, <laughs> but I really think one of the solutions is to get the city back out on the north side in a positive light. Because right now, the north side people, if you live on the north side or you from the north side, you don't come down here. Oakland, I think this is a great form. But point and take, this form is downtown. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because these are the people that probably have the most influence and, and who can actually probably exact change. And that's the issue yep. that we were just talking about, reaching the people who won't come to this form. Like the people I know who got fell, like fell, they got fell, and they're not going to come to this form because they, they already in their heads. It's like, right, yeah, that's, it, that's, like that's that. a given. It, yeah, it, it, that's it, a it, given. It, 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 Hey, like, can I have a talk with you? And it is true. She made a statement earlier, and I totally agree with her, but I understand you gotta have your uniform. Whenever you put some people on a higher scale, and people down here is already a mental inferiority, inferior. And me being in the military, I really understand yep. that. And it's the unit in the uniform. So when you do talk to people in the hood, and they see that uniform, one of two things you react, they gonna run, they think they did something, but until we get our Politicians, even our, and I, I'm not talking about the mayor, our councilmen, our police force out there and actually talking to these people. It used to be back in the day, they knocked on the door. And they knew, they knew the community. Our police officers don't know the community no more besides people who commit crime. I got one question real quick for Mr. Mr. Dane, Dane Waller. Um, Dane, 
Um, I've been knowing you. You've been coming in and out of the shop downtown for quite some time now. Only question I would ask I would ask you: What do you think is the Flint residents' responsibility when dealing with city issues like that? What would you say is the best way that we could actually deal with some of the problems in the city and go about doing that? <clears throat> See, I was trying to just be here to listen. No, sorry. <laughs> sure, because I would like to hear, you know, even from 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 you, um, just things that we probably need to hear that may be on your mind um, as far as what we could do, and. Um, you know, and it just kind of goes back to this this thing of personal responsibility and just being a resident of Flint. And I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Well, that's okay. I mean, which, whatever kind of issue or, or challenge you want to talk about, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. I'm somebody who thinks, however imperfect it is, that mm -hmm. um, there is this democracy that we get to participate in. Mm -hmm. It's not equal. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, so. I got trained through the AmeriCorps program and community organizing when I was in Michigan State. I, I very much believe in whatever issue you want to try to affect, whether that's the drug dealer next door or you know human trafficking in Thailand, whatever you want to pick. Um, you have to organize. You have to talk to people. You have to try to build you know some kind of power. Um, you need to insert yourself into you know the dialogue. Try to create that change. Um, I mean, that's kind of the general answer, but I think the, the neighborhoods that have you know, get, learned to get the most response from the city have found some kind of way to organize, you know, have, have you know, seen what's around them. They try to educate themselves. They try to get training. I mean, it's that combination. And, and it's not a fair system by any means. I mean, the deck is definitely stacked. Um, you know, I think the deck is stacked against certain kids. It's stacked against certain neighborhoods. Certain cities. Certain I mean, you, cities. you talked about democratic participation, and, and it's ironic considering that we're right. governed by an emergency right. manager. It is, and I spent a lot of time in the last election yeah, trying so. to change that, and our side lost. You know, so now we're here yeah. for you know to deal with the, the results of that. So, yeah. and that that's how I look at it. Yeah. Right? I think yeah. there, there's a, a real need for that organizing and, and education. And, doesn't solve all the you know world's problems. But, yeah. I mean, I think we all have to find that place, you know, given our individual talents of how we can kind of fit into that. Yep. And Dan's actually involved in the city. I love when he comes into the crepe shop. He has a relationship with Rob Clady, and mm -hmm. I just admire that. Like that's something. Um, he's involved. You know, he's around. He's there. He's available. Hey. You know. So I, I just love that about him. All right, we're going to take one more question, and I believe we got to wrap it up, okay? Just one more question. There you go. Kendrick Wallace. What's up, sir? Okay, um, this is it, and then we're going to have some final remarks. I don't really have a question. Um, okay. I'm kind of trying to stay on the solution side of things. Yeah. I've been involved in a lot of forums and a lot of hint sessions, as we might call them. Mm -hmm. um, but but we, we are... As bad as it may seem, we are headed in the right direction. Um, and one thing that we all seem to agree on is that it's going to take um, relationship building. Uh, the most successful thing I've seen start, it had to finish and it didn't materialize, but I, was, uh, I went to a school board meeting. Um, and it was a program, I don't remember the name, but it was uh, it had a pretty snazzy acronym for it. But it was uh, the, the parents. The teachers, the, um, the public safety, and the, the spiritual entities in the community meet together as leaders to form um, programs that would either raise funds or document resources to know what we're working with. You know, it don't make sense for me to get a million dollars and I'm just sitting on it and I can go buy anything I want anytime I want to. That's cool. I earned it. But... I still live here and I see things going on. Yes, yeah. You know, um, we have to, um, another thing is unity. Like um, s somewhere along the line, we lost the value in what we have amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to gain that back. I have to look at her and say she's valuable. I have to look at her and say she's valuable because we all live in the same, whatever amount of streets we live in, this is us. 
Um, and I have to, I have to not be afraid, even though um, I might not like the police. I still can't be afraid to, today, check the officer out. Say, how you doing today? You know, hold him accountable. Because if he's having a bad day, it's going to show right now. And I had the liberty to say, okay, well, officer, I'm going to leave you alone, and I can go call Mr. Wallen or whoever else is next and say, you know, officer, Pendleton's is having a bad day. Just want you to know that. You know, because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, I'm doing something about it. Right. And that's all I can do, but I, I, I can look myself in here and say I did it. That's not true. I can look myself and say I care. Um, but I think uh, with, if you get those entities, that's where the manpower is. That's where um, the people are at that you know care and that want change. Everybody belongs to one of those four groups. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, but if we get together and say, hey, we're, we're going to start doing this, and we're going to start doing that, because if I just have an ideal, I found around here, nobody wants to support it. You know, but maybe it's my pastor did. You know, maybe if the school principal did or the school, uh, the, the union, the school teachers union, certain entities have the influence to change. Um, and if those leaderships meet and pull out initiatives, because um, the general public is, sorry to say, we, even though we do this, we, we don't come out and make the change. We still want to listen to certain authority figures. So when you're in leadership, a lot of responsibility, you know, bears on you. So you have to go out and maybe have a few more meetings. Maybe you have to meet with some pastors. Or maybe, you know, but that, the unity and relationship building is where it's got to start. Yep, that's good. That's a good last word. Ken, hey, we just want to thank you for allowing us to use the answer room. And also, um, I do have um, Natasha Thomas Jackson from Raise It Up Youth Arts and Awareness um, has compiled a Ferguson action guide, six things you can do right now. So we talked about solutions. Um, some of these are small, some of these are kind of big, but it gives you a general idea about, you know, just ways in which you can start thinking about and actually making a positive impact, not just, you know, nationwide, but in your local community as well in response to this. So can you post that on the event? Forum on Facebook, so Absolutely. you can actually download it, look at it, read it. Yeah, and I also have uh, limited copies if you want. And we want to thank everybody for coming out. Your time is definitely valued. We thank you for your input. Um, yeah, let's work together. Everybody, we all have something that we can contribute to this world. We got to create it so we can create opportunity for somebody else. It may take a little bit of hard work, some dedication, some planning, some organizing, some investing, but it's well worth it. I want to thank all of our panelists for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, you all have a wonderful night. Continue to build with one another, too. Build these relationships. I'd just like to say real quick before everybody breaks up, thank you, Oakland, for pulling this together. Thank all of you for coming. Thank you all. Thank you. Juneteenth, a time to reflect and rejoice. Join the village. Celebrate African American Independence Day.
100 people, parents included, right now to show up to one particular school. Let's put it on the media. I will be the first person that will initiate this. Let's actually develop the summer programs that I've been in witness with throughout Baker College, which has been very successful under the learning support and services. Let's get more after school programs, even if they have to be community funded through nonprofit initiatives. Myers is a big sponsorship in this. Let's put it together. Let's get together and make these results happen. It's one thing to come to a forum like this, but it's another thing to actually put these things in work. So I'm, I'm almost confident most of us are not even familiar with what real personal responsibility is. We, we, we're not really that familiar with it. As the young lady spoke on before, she's in the school systems, I guarantee. How many active parents do you see, especially black men? Black men in these communities that are really active and involved. And without this, how can we blame the politicians or the school systems? Do you know in other countries you don't even have public school systems? So how we, 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 we've managed to neglect such a privilege here. I mean, Oprah had to open up her girls' school in another country. And you know why? She said she was more focused with the kids here or more materialized, focused on Air Jordans and iPads and iPods. <laughs> so, so you got to understand, our core values have been completely just... It's, it's been, I mean, seriously, it's been decayed across the board. And it neutralizes, you know what I mean? It neutralizes the community. So, so, the the responsibility. so the solution is we have to have responsibility and identify the fact there's a lack of parental involvement with kids. We're expecting the school to produce something we don't do at home. Period. So a lot of us that don't have life skills, what about the parents' responsibility to give us life skills? I mean, I didn't, I didn't come up with both of my parents, so let me just say that. I was raised by my grandparents. I had to get up under pastors and learn. I had to go to college and get under mentors and learn. I'm currently being mentored by now from different mentors. It, it's a learning thing of personal responsibility that defies the odds. You have to live by this. This is a core that cannot be replaced. It's not something of just saying, well, we know that, but there's an excuse. No, let's get it. Let's get 100 people together. Let's go with this. I adopt, adopt in elementary school, middle school, or any type of high school, and let's make it happen. As a community. As a community. Let's go right here. Courtney. Courtney or me? You. I can honestly say I didn't agree with a lot of things you said, but I will agree with the fact that I do think more parental responsibility needs to be accounted for. But I want to say something that you said about the school closing. Ten years ago, we was at 20,000 plus students. We're only at 6,000 now. So that's one of the reasons why our schools are closed. Now, now let's piggyback off of personal responsibility and parents. When the last time anybody did a school board meeting? If no one goes to a school board meeting and express exactly. some of this stuff, now that's, I will say that, but there's also more to just going to a school board because school board does not have any authority really to do anything. Right. And that's where they people can lobby. They can lobby in Lansing. They can actually make it from the oh, state. Yeah. And they can go, and I do. And I do this every day. Yeah. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I respect it. But I will say this, that's true. You got your nonprofits. There's some things that I... I also work at Clinton Northwest as a coach, and believe me, I don't go there doing my, none of my season anymore because I just can't, I can't deal with kids. I was in a teaching program, I just cut it out. I feel like I'm more effective doing other things than being a teacher at this point in my life. But one thing I've noticed, my, my niece goes to North Carolina. You brought up a good point. Why don't we hold teachers accountable? We test in October, in November for me. North Carolina test, they do an E, it's called EOG in a grade. They test at the end of the year. If your kids don't pass, if you don't have a certain passing rate at the end of the year, that teacher is put on warning, and then that teacher is suspended, and then that teacher cannot teach in that state. We don't hold our teachers accountable. Now, that, but it, that's teachers. But I'll also say, you said you go in school. Believe it or not, at the beginning of the school year, they do that. They bring out 100, and they bring out the black men. They do it every year. They walk the kids to the school. The police are out there. Now, somewhere in between the beginning of the year and the middle of the year, it just stops. They have a program, walk the kids to the schools, because we, don't, we all know the lights don't work. <laughs> Our street lights don't work, even though we pay a tax for it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm a graduate of Flint Northwestern. I'm not going to talk about, you already know my credentials. But the point is, I see plenty of people that I went to school with that came back. They don't have, they're not nonprofit. They don't do anything. They come up in that school after school and they have their own programs and they're keeping some of them kids there. We all can do it. Yep. Tomorrow's personal responsibility is getting
acknowledge is doing. Right. I wasn't going to talk about the school thing because that's a very touchy subject to me because I think <laughs> there's just so much more about <clears throat> schools that people fail. Because <laughs> I tell you something else because she brought up the testing. The testing is biased. Mm -hmm. I went to my mm -hmm. EMU program and they brought out every flaw in the testing and how it is biased towards race mm -hmm. and class. Yeah. And if you ever remember, I always think about different strokes. That day when he asked, I don't know how many people can live in a room with two bedrooms, and he named like nine kids, and they was trying to figure out how can he say nine kids. But depending on where you live at, you answer according to your situation. That's called social economics. <laughs> so I didn't want to say that. I was just, I, I understand. Um, I forgot your name. Darwin. Darwin, I think you bring up a lot of good points. I, I mean, but we just disagree on some stuff. Personal responsibility is a big thing, but it, it depends on who you're talking about, because depending on where you're from, and I'm not blaming, because believe me, I don't believe in blaming the system and blaming all that, because I believe that people make their own decisions in life, but sometimes decisions for you, have, you, you can get hindered by things in your society and your life. I'm not saying that you can't get out of it, but a lot of times that's what's going on now. And I, I just got to piggyback off this, I don't know education, because I just, because you said something about trusting, I'm sorry, but this has like been bothering me the whole time. It's the stigma. If I have a stigma towards the police and the police have a stigma towards me, how can I how can we trust each other when this, we gotta break the stigma? And it's the same thing. Now you're talking about community, let's do something with the community. And that same thing, first of all, really, I want to reach out to my community. No offense, but if I have a stigma towards the dude down the street, I can't trust him either. And I'm just saying that's where the solutions come from that. And I just gotta bring up one more thing. I think it's great that you're here, but we know half the police in Flint. It's not just Flint Police no more. It's the state board. We got to have them here, too, because, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't see too many African-American state boys, and I can't stand the state police right now. And I have my own, I mean, I just feel like, like I was just sharing with somebody else, I had 15 guns pointed at my head last month. But when my military ID failed, I'm good. Just like Pastor Richardson was just saying, I think he's going on. Pastor Richardson said he, he got pulled over in his own church. And when he said he's a pastor, they said, oh, okay, you a pastor. Mm -hmm. What? So, I mean, it goes both ways. And then it's the same. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to say a lot because it all kind of goes back into yeah, the education. I'm sorry. Yeah, yep, yep. But when you start talking about, here when, I got, when you talk about education, these kids, and I, and I know you can, these kids don't have no hope. Right. Mm -hmm. And when they see the Mike Brown in the air, I was just sitting here, I was reading my phone, I just got a, a poem from this guy mm -hmm. named Stop. We only see 15. And it's about this, it's about it so happened, it was about this. And he was telling me in the poem, he brings up his five-year-old, his five-year-old brother said, I don't trust the police. Just bring it up. But the song told me all the time, he was like, we, we talk about school. He was like, what's the point of going to school? This city did. I'm just living in the street. The the hope is gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say one more thing. I'm gone. Because <laughs> 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 a couple of people left and asked me to bring up stuff, so because they know how I bring it up. Mayor mm -hmm. and they asked, "You're here, and we have the same procedures as, as a couple of other places. Are you willing to change some of the procedures?" That's, that's held, I'm trying to remember how you said, held accountable against us as far as the police officers. If the police officers attack us, let's just use that example. If the police officers hit us, they don't get charged, let's use that example. But if I hit a police officer, mm -hmm. I'm charged. Mm -hmm. Assault and battery only goes one way. It only goes one way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, but we're talking about, they were talking about, I can't remember exactly how we brought it up. He was talking about, are you willing to look at the procedures that we have in our police force now? to change some of the stuff because they're the same procedures as other states that's having the same problem. And no offense to them, we all know, I'm being honest with you, nobody care about the body camera anymore. Let's get this gentleman right here. Yep. Hi, as a, um, Jeremy Royer, as a black foot Native American that was not raised on the reservation, there's, there's a couple things. One quick point is punishment. You know, nobody does punishment regarding personal responsibility like the United States. When you look at our education, look at our society, how is punishment working? Rhetorical question, it's not working, it's, it's really a dumb idea. The second thing is history of education regarding from the perspective of a Native American. Education began by religious, white, ass
assholes, kidnapping Native American children from the reservation, torturing, killing, and assimilating them to white values. It was intended for them to fail, and that still carries on today. Children from different cultures, from different walks of life are failing because they cannot be assimilated by a white world. And the, now, on the positive perspective, what can we do to change things? Um, when I look and read some of the articles coming from reservations, what they're doing, they're not asking white religious people, white corporations to give them money. They have legislation, they advocate for it so the reservations can design schools, including colleges, around their culture around their community, so therefore Pearson and all these other rich assholes cannot profit off of just simply educating children. They let the communities, and they have the funding, independently come so the communities can design the education curriculum so their children can succeed. Okay. Let's see. Right here. Yep, oh. Kevin. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey. Um, so. I may go in a different direction here, so just bear with me. I'm not uh -huh. going to take long. Preach, brother. Uh, <laughs> but the thing that disturbed me about, you know, the Ferguson situation is what I call, like, the hypocrisy from both sides. The hypocrisy. That's that's what really – so, you know, when the thing happens, um, everybody, every, every African-American that was there that seen something actually said something, right? <laughs> but when that happens – when it's not a white person who kills a black person, no one says anything. No one says anything. And so my 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 hypocrisy or my 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 disgust is when we talk about personal responsibility, black people at some point have to say, hey, if we're going to get our neighborhoods together, we need to respect ourselves first and foremost. There is a problem. There is a racism problem, right? Right. But we need to take responsibility and say, okay, Demonte killed. Trayvon the other day. We yeah. all know what happened. We need to work with the police. Even though there's some tension there with the police, we need to we need to say, okay, let's put our foot forward and take responsibility for our community. The second thing is the hypocrisy that I see on the other end, we say black lives matter from, from a white perspective, but no one's going back into the community and living there. No one's living there. There we go. No one's living there. So we're taking the intellectual capital out and then now you got this this implosion and this this spiral. But we say Black Lives Matter when one situation happens. If it matters so much to you, move back in, mentor, learn and get an understanding of these people, of so, us. Mm -hmm. Bill, how, I mean, how many people got black friends that they know intimately? How many people got black friends that they know intimately and can discuss these things? That's my that's my 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 discuss with the situation because we're not willing to acknowledge that, like, you know, I don't want to stay in the African American community. They're killing each other. Mm -hmm. That's what white people say. And guess what black people say? As soon as I get some money, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> so I mean the hypocrisy is what's there, there's there's a there's a clear issue with profiling and you know black on black crime and you know the education system. Mm -hmm. But the last time I checked, like the white man didn't sleep with my mom and then or didn't tell me uh, he didn't sleep with my mom. My dad did, and he did. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He's gone, and I had to find a way. It was by the grace of God that I'm a man today. But mm -hmm. you can't blame that on the white guy. You know what I'm saying? Man. You can't blame that. In yep. the same way, you can't blame, uh, you know, urban decay and all that stuff just totally on uh, African Americans. There is a systematic. Yeah, it's a systematic thing that this that's this that's, 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 that's perpetuated. In place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so. Yeah. Why do you gotta understand? Hey, what am I doing to, to help this? What am I speaking out on when I see this? Am I connecting my black friends to the networks and the, the resources that I have? Right. Am I doing that, or am I being selfish? So it's a hard issue. Mm -hmm. That's all I understand. Can I piggyback well, back off of what you said? Can I want to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. So I'm that white guy. <laughs> Honestly, I live in Swartz Creek. Everybody out there is mostly racist. I can tell you because <laughs> they think they can talk to me like that, and it's okay. Yeah. Um, how do I fix the fact that when I go down, I work on the east side of Flint. I'm, I'm, I have an IT company, I'm, I'm all over the place. When I go down to like Brothers Party Store, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting, yes. So, but that's it. So, like, I walk in the store and, and people are me mugging. 
like nobody messes with me because of my size and they just but I mean that that like how do I how do I break that barrier like like what am I supposed to do I have a conversation here I don't care about the cameras I, I can I can handle the cameras if somebody wants to record me um, I can delete it one way or another but how do I how do I fix that from a social standpoint? So, so okay. it's like how, yeah. how does he get involved? I, know. I, know. I, know. I, know. I, know. I was saying, do you have any black friends? Yep. Yeah. I think right here. Start. She may be white in color, but, so, so, uh, but I mean, she, she, so, so, she graduated so, so, she's on the east side, but I, but I mean, even like having that conversation, well, no, I gotta point him out, see, this is what's happening, like, who's your black friend, I'm just saying that because at, at the end of the day, it's gonna take you to take some personal risk and say, you know what? I don't really know any African Americans like that. Let me move to their community and see what they're really experiencing. Or visit. And, and, or visit. Yeah. Or just say, hey, let me get in here and get adoption. That's a, I mean, hey, it's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, just those are the only thing I come off the top of my head. But I mean, getting some, some, some black friends and really saying, okay, like, what is your real struggle? I don't understand it. Like, and, and, and you tell me, and I'll try to see if I can use my. A friend of mine said this, so don't take this my whiteness to, 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 to help you out. So I'm saying though, like that's a, just a personal relationship and really understanding somebody. Yeah. I mean, and I, I'll say this real quick, and I'm gonna be done. Uh -huh. I grew up in Flint, uh, West McClellan, and uh, Martin Luther King, the North Side. I grew up on Roof Street. I mean, that's you know that's bad over there. Um, but I, I, I went to Flint Southwest and I graduated, got a basketball scholarship, went way out to Casper, Wyoming. Now it's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was good for me. It was good for me. Came back home, went to uh, uh, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. That's all black, right? So I get this dynamic. Lived in my park. Now I stay on Woodcock Street. Woodcock Street is not the greatest. Uh, but it was an intentional thing because I wanted to not just talk and run my mouth, I wanted to go back to an area which is a drug street to, to, to say, okay, I'm not going to, to, to call the police on you. I want to help y'all out with the education that I have. And my family's there, and it's, it's, it's actually a church venture, but I'm saying, hey, I can talk and do all that, but where, where am I, where's my, my heart really at? So we moved in, and we're building great uh, relationship. He's still selling drugs, but <laughs> um, they respect us. Um, we have conversations. We're trying to get some people to come over. And, and that's my personal responsibility as a black man in my community to go back, take my intellectual capital, mm -hmm. take my heart, my love for them, and go back in. So, but mm -hmm. I would say, you know, grab some people in here. Like, it's a million black guys in here. Get some relationships, get some phone numbers. And say, hey man, I'm he, he's a good guy. Yeah, so yeah, he's a good guy. Like hey, here we go, right here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, right here. I think that's the first thing. There you go. Let me get her right there in the red. Really okay. Oh, Naira. Naira. Yes. I'm so sorry. There's so okay. many names to remember. I know well, a lot of y'all, though. I mean, I have two quick comments mm -hmm. and then a question for the panelists. Mm -hmm. um, one is I think it's a danger when um, I would say, when we kind of conflate um, black on black crime with murders by the police, because police are agents of the state. Now, if I come in with a gun and plow everyone down in this room, I'm Naira. I am not a police officer. So I think that, um, and, and, and we don't discuss the white on white crime that happens across the country, too. But usually, like, when it's conversation, when someone, R or, or someone who is murdered by the police, it's like, well, what about the black on black crime? Because I think that usually, like, when we have these sort of discussions, um, like, trying to individualize it without discussing the superstructure of what's happening is, is doing us a kind of a disservice. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say, like, number, and then the other thing is he kind of shared what personal responsibility meant to him. But for me to have a, a dialogue, I need to know from the panelists, what is personal responsibility? Because I think that's also a thing, like when we talk about systemic issues, like when we try to individualize it, it kind of gives people a pass to try to address the systemic stuff that's occurring. So what does personal responsibility mean to the panelists? 
and and I, I knew someone would would bring up the phrase black on black. I was just kind of waiting for that. Um, uh, the, the fact of the matter is that the majority of crime is intra-racial, which means that it's whatever, black on black, you know, white on white, you know, it's, it's done by someone you know. So it's usually done by an acquaintance or a family member. And, and, and that's, you know, regardless of race. So saying black on black is a red herring. It's just, just going to distract the, the conversation. It's not relevant. Um, the fact of the matter, it's, it's, not, it's not relevant in terms of this conversation when we're talking about police accountability and police brutality, and the issue is on Ferguson. So black on black crime is a red herring. Black, young, African-American males are 21 times more likely to be killed by the police than their white counterparts, and that is a fact. And that is the issue, and that is the discussion here. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we got to be careful, because I think what the African American community is saying, when when that question is turned around onto them, say, hey, well, why don't you deal with this in your own community? Um, I think what most of them would say or would think, but may not articulate, is no, it's it's being dealt with in the community. We we call the authorities. People are being locked up, right, when they commit these crimes. But it's when those who are, who are saying they are protecting us from crime are killing us. And I think that poses a different um, perspective to where they, I don't see them as in a sense like, well, uh, such and such died. Well, you know what I mean? Psh, dad. You know what I mean? Also where they're armed with military grade weapons. There That's you go. a huge difference. And so well. it's it's like, yo, you're you you're to protect us against this in our own community. But now we're being killed. Now who who do we look to? And I think that's the ultimate mm -hmm. question that most African Americans are asking when they're questioned with the um, question of black on black crime and accountability in their own neighborhood. They need to the force as well. Can you answer? Can you just answer her question? Though? Yeah, I want to know what personal responsibility means because, for, I, I mean, I'm a racial justice trainer, and part of it is creating a common context. So we need to know what we're all talking about. I think, and not in, not, in, not in just this, by the way, and not in just this. Okay, not so just what we're talking. About. Right, and I think Kevin kind of hit it, like hit the ball a little bit, to where he talked about what was personal responsibility for him practically like where his life is, where he lives, and what are the problems, what are the issues in his community that he can get involved in. And I think all of us have that responsibility, but are we looking for it? Are we involved in it? We all live in Flint neighborhoods, but can we actually honestly ask ourselves, like, am I problem solving within the neighborhood? Hey, these kids aren't being educated. Can I open up some way to get them educated? Is there a, is there a tutoring thing I could start in the neighborhood? Um, you know, police to civil, uh, citizen relationships. Like, it's, I think that's what will define personal responsibility. If you're looking in your neighborhood and looking at the problems and the things that are going on and just getting involved. Is that fair? Well, one of the things about personal responsibility is that I'm sitting on this panel and not on my cell phone. I'm sorry. You know, there, are people, there are people calling me and the citizens texting me about things, and I have to answer that. Unfortunately, I don't have that ability where I say Let's keep I can't it clean. Let's keep it clean. All right. All right. Can, I, can I just change something just briefly, just so we can get a better sense? I, I think I don't get this in the same direction. Looking, you said, what do we turn? What do we turn to? We turn to the same sources as our forefathers who overcame during the civil rights movement. They turn to God and they turn to themselves. Okay, and it was through the unity and the community that 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 pushed Washington to, to change legislation. Okay, and, and so when you say what is personal responsibility, it is using the God ordained power that God has given each and every human being to simply solve our problems. Not making an excuse for it, going beyond the odds. Now here it is, this officer, he's on, he's, he's has a badge, he's on call. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the chief here, and you know, the tax is unnecessary. However, I will say this as well, because Kevin, you walked out when this was actually said. They said not to bring up black on black crime because that's more of a distraction for this type of forum. And I'll be honest, it's that type of mentality 
that, that has had the black community so divided and so ignorant. I, I made an attempt to really quote a, a quote by Martin Luther King, and he said, there's nothing more dangerous than conscious ignorance, okay? And you gotta understand this. And in the stupidity and the, and the consciousness, the sincere ignorance and the conscious stupidity that runs in our community, it's just, it's, 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 it's outrageous. So, so we need to talk about, well, I'm, well, I'm concerned, so I'm concerned that you, you no, you know what? Hold on one second. No, uh, let, let, you let, finish, let, let me finish. 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 Let me one minute. Put it in that. So, with that being said, you want to know the statistics? Go down to your local police station and ask them. Wait, a minute, and ask them. Wait a go, go, down, go down to the police station of any county, any city, and ask them for the statistics on race and demographics. They will tell you that it's less than a one percent chance that a black person is going to be killed by another white police officer. It's almost a ninety-five percent chance that another black person is going to be harmed by another black person. We're twelve percent of the population. And with abortion and so many other things that are the issues now, when you have nearly 5,000 babies being aborted, Bird Grove versus Wade, 50 million since then, come on, that is the real injustice in our community. So God bless you. All right. All right. So he takes us the floor for let's quite get. a significant amount of time and then yeah, just walks here. out. It's not a community All right, let's get, let's get this gentleman here. Hold on. Wait, wait, no wait. Longer. Hold on. Hey, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 Huh? It's no longer relevant, but to your first comment about parenting responsibility, mm -hmm. a long time ago, uh, I taught a class, a parenting class for Mount Adult High School. I never met a parent who didn't want to be a good parent, but they were not informed well. And I want to tell you that, that some simple points made in the parenting class at Mount Adult High School, night class, 10 weeks, I've run into many people since then who tell me, I learned about, and da 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 And a you know, simple thing like when a kid is crying in the grocery store, saying, I want that pop, I want that pop. And the parents give in. Instead of doing that, I used to say, buy the kid a box of crayons. 